Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today. My name is Darren Carr, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow working with Scott Edwards at Harvard University. Today, I'm really excited to be sharing my research on comparative genomics of limb reduction in squamate reptiles. So as an evolutionary biologist, my main interest is in convergent adaptive evolution, which provides some of the most compelling evidence for the role that natural selection can play in the generation of biodiversity. So there are increasing numbers of examples of convergent evolution, including many of the classic ones that are indicated on this slide. And like many of these investigators, I tend to study whether phenotypic convergence is driven by genetic or molecular convergence. So I primarily investigate the phenomenon of convergent adaptive evolution by leveraging squamate reptiles, a clade well known for large numbers of transitions and apparent evolutionary convergence. So several natural history traits readily turn over in squamates, including sex chromosomes and determination, which is beautifully summarized in this cover image from Tony Gamble's work from a few years ago. However, other traits are also quite variable across squamates in sort of a similar manner, including the phenotype that I am most interested in, limb loss and body elongation, or the evolution of a serpentine body form. Now, all of you probably know of snakes as the quintessential example of a limbless lizard, but limb reduction or loss has occurred repeatedly in other lineages of squamate reptiles as well. And as such, for experimental reasons, we have focused our attention on a specific clade of lizards in the skink family that provides great power to explore questions related to convergent limb loss in squamates, and this is the genus Larista. So here's a phylogeny of Larista diversity, which shows how limb morphology varies from species to species. So we see phenotypes that range from a normal lizard phenotype to a snake-like phenotype with many intermediate phenotypes in between. And as you can see, some of these phenotypes have putatively evolved independently within just this genus, making it an ideal system for investigating the genomic basis of convergent limb reduction. So we have generated several data sets, but today I'm going to focus on our work generating reference genomes for two species, a foley limb species, Larista bougainvillei, and a limb reduced spe uh, species, Larista edwardsae. And this enables us to use comparative genomics with existing vertebrate genomic resources to investigate limb reduction. And I should also point out that these two reference genomes are among the first genomic resources generated for skink lizards, which collectively comprise 15% of squamate diversity and 4% of amniodiversity. So we generated genomes for these two Larista species using 10x genomics and high c data and based both on sequence contiguity and on the presence and absence of core eukaryotic genes, both of these assemblies are relatively high quality among existing squamate reference genomes available today. And to detect regions of the genome putatively involved in limb reduction, we applied an approach called phyloACC, which, which detects signal of evolutionary rate shifts of genomic elements along branches of interest on a phylogeny. So we first applied this approach um, to a data set of protein coding genes, um, which were gathered from an orthofinder analysis of 14 amnio species, including our two Larista species and the genomes of three snake species. And after some quality control, we were able to analyze about 12 and a half thousand genes using a phyloacc. And also, given that limb reduction has been extensively studied in model organisms, we cross-referenced our phyloacc results with 433 genes putatively involved in limb development, just to see how much signal we could detect for evolutionary rate shifts in known limb genes. And here's a look at the results. So we detected signal for many rate accelerations on specific branches of the phylogeny, namely those leading to the, the snake uh, species, and that leading to the limb-reduced Larista species. So an interesting question is how many of these genes uh, with evidence of accelerated evolution are A, involved in limb morphology, and B, are shared between any of the uh, snake branches and the branch to, to this limb-reduced Larista species. And we found a total of 17 genes that are shared between these lineages, as well as one to two dozen other genes that show lineage-specific evolutionary rate shifts. And I've pasted the gene IDs for these 17 genes on this slide for those that are interested, but I'd say the big take home here is that we are able to detect signal of acceleration at several genes involved in limb development in both snakes and the limb-reduced Larista species. But we are also considering non-coding genomic loci that could be responsible for the phenotypic patterns that we see. Specifically, we investigated conserved non-exonic elements, or CNEEs, uh, which are likely regulatory regions of the genome that control gene expression of nearby genes. So we gathered roughly 4,000 CNEEs identified as potentially linked to limb development in previous investigations. This includes studies of regulatory regions associated with limb reduction in studies of snakes and rat-type birds, 
as well as validated enhancers from the VISTA database uh, that are known to be expressed in limbs during development. So these elements were identified using BLAST, and we applied the Bayesian approach in PhiloACC to detect evolutionary rate shifts. And one element in particular that we were especially interested in evaluating was what is the ZRS enhancer, which was previously implicated in driving limb loss in snakes. And here's, uh, here are the results of that analysis. On the left is a phylogeny of the vertebrate diversity that we sampled, including our limb-reduced species in red. Uh, the branch length, as well as the colors, indicate the rates of evolution in the ZRS locus based on our phylo-ACC analysis. And on the right, you can see uh, a multi-sequence alignment of the ZRS locus, where we can see that the ZRS is relatively conserved between these two Larista species. And this is in contrast to what we see in snakes, where there's a great deal of sequence degeneration in this region of the genome. So this collectively supports the, the, this provides strong evidence that alternative genomic loci may be responsible for the evolution of limb morphology in Larista. And it also aligns well with similar results from investigations of limb reduction in other lineages of lizards. Um, but we were also particularly interested in determining whether we could detect any elements with convergent rate shifts in both snakes and the limb-reduced Larista species. And I'm very happy to report today that we can. So it turns out that there's one element in particular that stood out to us. So this figure takes the same form as the one I showed before of the ZRS enhancer, but unlike what we observed in that element, what we see here is evidence for rate acceleration on the branch to this limb-reduced Larista species. And looking at the alignment, it appears that substitutions potentially building up at the beginning of this element may be leading to this signal. And a big question now becomes what gene this element may regulate. And given our approach, what we expected to see were genes involved in limb development located near the CNEE in the genome. And this is exactly what we see. About 165 KB downstream of the CNEE is a gene called ZBTB20. And previous research has shown that protein, protein coding mutations in this gene lead to many developmental abnormalities in humans that we collectively refer to as primrose syndrome. And some of these phenotypes include deformities of both the skeletal and muscular systems of limbs. So overall, the manifestation of limb abnormalities with hu in humans with primrose syndrome, as well as other functional information from the literature that I don't have time to get to today, supports the role that ZBTB20 and its associated CNAE may be playing in the evolution of limb reduction in Larista and in snakes. So finally, to conclude, squamates and Larista specifically represent promising models for understanding the evolution of convergent limb reduction. While substitutions in the ZRS enhancer do not appear to be associated um, with limb reduction in Larista like they are in snakes, we identified other promising candidate genes in at least one regulatory region that may play a role in limb reduction in both snakes and in Larista, which I'm very excited about. So I'd like to conclude by thanking the Edwards Lab at Harvard for all of their help with this work. I have benefited greatly from superb collaborators in Australia who facilitated this research. And I'm also grateful to my fellowship support from the NSF and support from Harvard and the South Australian Museum. Thank you for your attention today, and I'm happy to take any questions that I have time for.